It's Platt, and today we go sailing. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today comes to us from uh, Full Sail Brewing. It is their top sale bourbon barrel aged Imperial Porter. Uh, you guys know that I love multi beers any time of the year, even though I kind of talk about some beers are more appropriate, you know, seasonally, and we are definitely in the dog days of summer, but you know what? Still give me a multi beer, and so this Imperial Porter is what we're going to try today. Uh, a little background of Full Sail. I don't think I've reviewed any of their beers or not, not at least in the Beer of the Week uh, series. Uh, Full Sail is uh, located in Hood River, Oregon. Um, Hood River's a little east, I believe, of Portland. Hood River is the the windsurfing capital of the world so obviously a uh, sailing themed brewery makes plenty of sense uh the brewery was founded in 1987 by irene ferment um she also had uh the original brewer i believe gentleman's name was jamie oh god emerson had checked my notes real quick uh jamie emerson they uh had the kind of founding vision, even though I believe Jamie came in a little bit later, but um, they originally built the brewery in the old Diamond Fruit Cannery that was located there. Apparently in the area, there's a ton of fruit orchards, farms, you know, even some vineyards, stuff like that, and uh, made sense to have the packing cannery, uh, cannery on, on the river there. Uh, Hood River leads into the uh, Columbia River, which is the main uh East West River there on the Oregon Washington border. Um, the brewery was originally known as Hood River Brewing Company, but again, uh, the sail na sailing name or anything sailing theme or windsurfing theme just kind of became uh, obviously apparent. Now, Oregon's always been known as a hot spot uh, for craft brewing, seen uh, just to the Northwest in general, uh, but uh, Full Sail was still one of the originators there in, in Oregon. Again, we're talking about the late, mid to late 80s. Uh, even in even in craft brewing hotspots, that's still the early days. That's uh, still one of the founders. And Full Sail, again, was one of the originators there in Oregon. One of the things that made them unique, is, I mean, again, especially with the early craft brewers, was they were really determined early to get into bottling of beers. Now, the business model back then was generally a brew pub, and then maybe you start selling your kegs to some neighbor, you know, bars down the street, stuff like that. But as a business model, bottling and definitely canning was not uh, an option back then. But Full Sail was determined to do that, and they ended up becoming the first craft brewery to be commercially successful in their bottling and distributing of bottled beer. Now the first beer that they did was their Full Sail uh, Golden Ale. It was however the Full Sail Amber Ale that really got Full Sail up and running. Uh, it won gold at the 1989 Great American Beer Festival and we talked about in several uh, breweries about how that first year or two if you can get a gold medal, silver medal, some kind of recognition at the Great American Beer Fest or the World Beer Cup, how that really sets you up for success in the future. And that's what happened at Full Sail. Uh, they continue to grow. Uh, I believe today they're one of the top 10 largest craft brewers in America. Um, maybe not as popular as, as obviously like the Sierra Nevadas and Stone and whatever, you know, not quite name recognition, but uh, again, a definitely successful brand in that early success at the Great American Beer Festival definitely helped. Um, real quick, a uh, little unique story about them. Um, through, through the success and through this growth, they ended up selling the company out to their employees. They had an employee stock option program, and the employees took over in 1999. Now, the employees eventually did sell out themselves. Uh, in 2015, they sold out, I believe, to a San Francisco-based brewing hedge fund or it was some kind of hedge fund related that focused on on brewing and they sold out there kind of a cool story and we'll definitely talk about uh, employee owned breweries in a little bit real quick let's go over some of their other beers uh first they have a blood orange hefeweizen 5.2 percent alcohol by volume this is a hazy beer with a crisp wheat finish 
Uh, the blood orange thing has become uh, kind of a new fruit du jour out there, I've noticed uh, in other breweries. Uh, next, they have Harrington's Bourbon Aged Red Ale. Now, this is named after former University of Oregon quarterback Joey Harrington. Great college quarterback, not so great NFL quarterback. You can ask your uh, Detroit Lion fans about that. However, uh, despite that, uh, proceeds, certain uh, a portion of the sale of that beer goes to charity. So no matter what you thought about Joey Harrington's time at the Detroit Lions, uh, this beer does uh, benefit charity, so go have one. Uh, next is their Session, uh, their session American Lager. Uh, 5% alcohol by volume. I talked about other breweries having these these uh, regular guy beers. And this is probably the most successful of the craft breweries with their, you know, American lager or American light lager style beers. Uh, this has taken off to, to the point where Full Sail now has Session kind of almost as a separate brand or its own identity. They have their own website and they have several beers under that brand. There's a Session Cerveza, there's Session Light, there's a Session Hazy IPA, a Session Hefeweizen, and probably my favorite is their Session Black Lager, which again, I think is a great beer uh, for the regular guy fan, but you know, the guy that drinks the Miller Lite, Coors Light, what have you, I think you can get him drink this beer and you get him exposed to the maltier, the darker malts, the darker flavors, yeah, but it's still very drinkable. So uh, cool little story there. And again, the, the Session brand is taking them to the next level. Well, before we try this beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd talk to you about, uh, you know, we said earlier that Full Sail uh, ended up being owned by its employees. I think this is a great idea, and several other breweries have done it, and I think business in general should look at the model, but I think brewing, craft brewing, is really perfect for it. You get those 10, 15 first employees, the company's growing, the owners put in 10, 15 plus years to get it to this point. He wants to cash out, you can have, let the employees have their opportunity to actually own the brewery itself. Really cool idea, and I think more companies sh should do that. But I want, really quickly, I want to talk about two or three companies that have done this before, and just a really uh, cool idea. First is Odell Brewing, the folks that give you Dale's Pale Ale. Uh, get a real classic uh, beer out there. The, the owners realized at a certain point that they, you know, it was going to be time for them to go, time to retire, they, you know, ready to cash out. And we've talked about this. I, I totally am for, if you put 20 years and this is your project and you've just had enough, to, you know, move on, cash out, you know, you've earned it. And, but they realized they were, they were getting to that point, but they didn't necessarily want to deal with either, you know, a big company like AB InBev or Heineken, the Carlsberg Group, what have you, or with the hedge fund guys. You know, they're all going to have a team of lawyers. They're going to be just too much haggling or whatever. And they decide that, hey, let's let's sell it to people we know that still care about the brand, that aren't just going to do the cheapest thing, that, you know, it's an easier transaction for us. There's not going to be as much haggling, this, that, and the other. So I thought that was a really cool idea. Uh, next is Alaskan Brewing. I believe we talked about this when I reviewed their Amber Ale, that they were an employee-owned brewery. Uh, they ended up becoming finally, I think, fully owned now by the employees, even though I think the owners still may have a small piece or something, but I say fully owned, majority owned. Um, and one of the things they started, their owners started doing, which again, I think more people need to do, is they were honest with their employees and they start showing them the books and letting them know that they weren't a publicly traded company. If you work for a publicly traded company, you can see the books whenever. Uh, but a lot of times in other companies, they say, ah, we don't just trust this, you know, we're making money or we're losing money. You know, I think that's a cool idea. They start showing the books, the employees, you know, then start buying the stock, what have you, and they've shared this experience. I, again, I, I think openness is just a great idea. Uh, last example is New Belgium. Uh, I, I know we talked about this one, reviewed one of their beers. Uh, their original founder, eventually did want to give the company to uh, the employees. I think it was a slower transition. I think they slowly bought up ownership. It wasn't something that happened fairly quick. Um, 
their employees, though, did eventually end up selling out to a subsidiary of Karen, uh, the big Japanese conglomerate. Uh, again, I think, though, this is cool. Um, you know, I've always thought, you know, people that put in that kind of time and effort have the right to sell out. Well, the original owner got to leave but gave it to somebody they knew would take care of their baby and then the employees got to be the owner and then they got to cash out so i think that's a really cool story and i i hope to see more of this in the future again especially in the craft brewing and maybe craft distilling uh businesses um yeah a lot of times they may end up eventually in a hand of a conglomerate but at least two or three levels of people get to share in the profit which i think is real cool well, enough about employee-owned breweries. Let's try a beer from a formerly employee-owned brewery. Oh, that is dark. All right, we got a little head of uh, khaki, darker khaki. Let's give her a nose. Oh, my gosh. You really pick up some of them dark fruits. Um, that you get in like a, a you know really big beer, you know uh, almost like a prune, uh, dark red fruits, plums. Let's give her a try. Oh man, that is nice. And it's thick. You pick up that barrel, that the heavy wood notes, the vanilla. Um, but again, there's a lot of dark fruit. There's ooh, just ooh. Boy, after, after a little bit, uh, kind of an espresso, the coffee flavors come a little bit later. Um, it's the dark fruit up forward, then you kind of rotate into some chocolate, and then you kind of get into the coffee and the real dark malts. Man, that's a... Man, that's a nice beer. Uh, longer finish, medium plus body. Um, it's uh, ten percent. You feel the alcohol, but it's not a burn. But you know it's there. You know you're drinking a big boy beer. Um, man, that is nice. You get a lot of that bourbon in there. I mean, uh, ooh, yeah. There's just some about these dark beers again. That bourbon barrel, and it's a, it's kind of a unique thing because you do pick up some of that bourbon, but it's not. You don't notice like the rye bite of the bourbon. It's more that kind of the corn sweetness mixing with that, you know, wood and that vanilla and stuff like that. And it, boy, it's, this is a good little beer. Oh, I could savor that. That's something I could drink in a snifter. This is something just I'm going to enjoy. Try, try, I'm going to enjoy this beer for a while after the camera gets off. Trust me. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.